Hey there, Raleigh City Farm today, and we got a bunch of bed flips to do and some transition stuff, but hold on, I gotta get some coffee first. All right, so much better. Big fan of Yellow Dog. It's a cafe next door to us here, and uh, just great people over here. But anyways, so what's going on today is we got a bunch of beds to flip, and this is always a tricky time of year because you know, you're like for us right now in the high tunnel here, and it's a, it's a nice day today, but the light is starting to go down every day and the heat units are starting to go down. Uh, but we can grow pretty late in the year, but it's always a struggle to decide when do you pull your sort of summer crops out and put in your fall and winter crops. It depends on everywhere that you are. So for us here, um, we just put this bed of lettuce in the end of last week. Um, our two um, beds of the Italian sweet peppers are still cranking right now. So I really can't justify pulling them out. But what's going on here in the middle, which we're starting to work on, is uh, we had a whole bed of hot peppers here, mixed hot peppers, and the production was insane. And we've just been having trouble moving them every week. So um, we're gonna make the decision to take this out and put some kale in here. So we're gonna put, we planted two beds of kale in here. And yeah, so that's what's going on. So we harvested everything we could. We got great production out of this for the last couple months. So yeah, we transition this over to uh, fall greens. Should be great. All right, so I just want to show you something that's going on in the tunnel here. And if you guys have been following along, you remember we started this project in early February and we the first thing we did was try to get the tunnel going. And we kind of made a big compromise. We didn't get to tarp in here because we didn't have time. We wanted to get production up as quickly as possible. And the result of that was the weed pressure in here was high all summer. And so what we did um, sort of halfway through the year is when we put in some longer term crops, we put down landscape fabric that had holes in it. And that was sort of a compromise because I could keep the ground covered and try to occultate the ground and to kill the weeds, but it also is able to grow plants at the same time versus just tarping the field, tarping the blocks, uh, you know, the beds and just waiting. So that worked out really well. And I know a lot of farmers do put down landscape fabric before they plant crops, especially long-term crops like peppers and tomatoes. I just, I prefer not to if I can get around it. Um, I'd rather have the soil open and um, we can do some interplanting, other things like that. But you guys could probably see, we just pulled the tarp off of this and this had cucumbers in it. Sorry, not the tarp, the landscape fabric. And yeah, the weed pressure is so much lower. So the fact that we can come in here and prep our bed and try to have minimal soil disturbance and then plant our kale in here, we uh, we should be in much better shape moving forward. So we had a foggy morning, it was nice and cool and the sun's coming out, it's warming up today. I'm kind of regretting that warm coffee, shouldn't have gotten with ice this morning. Anyways, uh, we got these two beds all prepped out and the soil in here is looking really fantastic. I'm super pumped about it. And um, so we're transplanting red Russian kale in here today and they always kind of, for whatever reason, they're not like leggy, but they always have this like little bit that comes out before the first node. That's what I've always noticed with these guys. And so when we transplant these in the ground, we're just gonna bury them and uh, just, just below that first node to give it a little bit more strength. But we had really great luck with the kale in here in the spring, so we're gonna put two beds in here and get us into fall and, and maybe even over winter with them. We'll see how it goes. So yeah, get these two guys transplanted out. We are doing them three rows, 12 inches apart in row, and we offset the middle row by six inches. And we just got a gritter, so I'm really excited about that. And we haven't uh, implemented it yet. We're gonna be doing it soon, but I have to adjust some of my um, my seating and, and trays and stuff to match the the spacing on the gritter. So we'll, we'll start working that into our system here, but it should be an awesome tool for, uh, for training and just keeping consistency among all the, all the people here. All right, so we got a lot of beds to flip today and I wanna talk about something a little bit different with this bed flip right here. Hopefully you guys have seen how we flip beds. I'll put a link up over here for you to check out that video. But basically we broad fork, add compost and amendments and then tilt it and then rake it. And so one of the things about the tilter is it's great to incorporate amendments and to get a nice tilt or you know structure to the soil that you're, that you're planting into. But another thing is like, this block here is for more long-term crops, and so we had squash in here for a while, and so the beds tend to shift a little bit over time. The wood chips start pushing things around, all that kind of stuff. So uh, what you can do with the tilther is you can push the soil one way or the other to try to keep the bed the right shape. So let me show you how to do that real quick. So the tilther is amazing. I love this tool, and there's some little tweaks here and there to get a little bit more proficient with it and get the feel for it. So. When you're running it down a string line, I usually keep it an inch or two off the string line, and you wanna keep an eye on where the soil gets thrown, not where the tilther is. So that's what you always wanna keep an eye on. Now here, the soil has gone a little bit away from the string line, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, as I run it, I'm gonna pull it a little bit further away from the string, and then turn the tilther sideways to help throw the soil towards the string line. Let me show you.
And again, keeping an eye on where the soil's going, not where the tilter is. Sometimes it's really tricky for me to get a vlog done on these days. We've got a lot of people here working. But one thing that's been crucial about the farm, especially this year, but just farms in general, even if it's by yourself, like you really want to simplify your SOPs, you know, your standing operating procedures, basically just how you run your farm, the steps in which you take to flip beds or transplant or whatever. And I think that's been one of the big successes for the farm this year, especially with our interns and having new interns every few months and those sorts of things. It's like really dialing in your SOPs and making them as simple as possible so that people can learn them quickly and understand them quickly. And the best part about that is not just that the fact that everything gets done the same way, but if something gets broken during the day in terms of like someone needs to leave early or someone gets, you know, needs to work on something else, it's like anyone can hop in and just take care of what they need to take care of because we all do it the same way. So, uh, you know, we just we just got that bed prepped and so um, this one's been started to prep but I have them transplanting right now and I'm just gonna finish up this bed. But again, it's super easy because we all do it the same way. Got this green onion all transplanted out. It's just one of my favorite crops. It's so easy to grow. It's just amazing. And uh, Nick is out here today, our beekeeper. Let's go check in with him. He's doing a little hive inspection. All right, so we have a couple of hives here on the farm and I did a longer video with Nick uh, earlier this year and I'll put a link up here for that. It's like really like beekeeping 101. It's super detailed, but let's see. Uh, how are we doing today, Nick? How, how are the hives doing? The hives are doing pretty well, actually. They've been, they've been doing well all season, so no complaints. Uh, I think it's probably more about what you're doing here at the farm than anything because I've had a lot of hives this season that have struggled with all kinds of stuff, but these hives are doing great, so. So you think it's mainly from just like having a lot of diversity and a lot of plants here? Yeah, I'm, that's my best guess. All right, you know, cool. Who's to say? I mean, but it, the, the, these, are, these ones are actually doing very well, but these are the same ones that we installed earlier in the year and, um, yeah, I mean, they're looking pretty strong going into the winter. All right, awesome. I'll probably feed them in the next few months or so, next few weeks. But. Okay. Well, thanks for everything you do, Nick. Yeah, all right. Well, wouldn't be another day at Raleigh City Farm without something wrong with the uh, the rainwater system. So, I gotta go check it out. All right, well, I have no idea what was wrong, but what was going on earlier in the week, the tank was full and the water was, the city water was running, like that, that shut off wasn't shutting off and it was just running over and, and overflowing. But I just went up there and checked it and everything seems to be working all right. So, I guess this thing's got a mind of its own and it feel like it always needs attention, but it is working. Uh, we're collecting water. These tanks are both uh, really full right now. So let's keep an eye on it. All right, so I will give you guys a little bit of an update on the greenhouse. So let's go check that out. So this is all the buckwheat. You guys have been following along. So we took out all the gravel, we tilled it, we added some compost, we tilled that in, planted buckwheat out here, and got a little bit of a spotty germination, but it was kind of hard for us to hand water this, and the soil's like really mixed all over the place. So. At least we got some stuff going in here. We got some biology going. We'll uh, we'll keep you guys updated on this, but you know it's just a really nice start out here. I think this is going to be great, and uh, we'll see how long it goes. We're eventually going to tarp it, and then uh, for a while, and then we'll build lasagna beds in here and get this stuff planted. Sometime late fall, early winter. So that wraps up the work day today, and as you can see, it's pretty crazy here. A lot of days, and we had a lot of help today. And I just I always say this, but all the interns have just been incredible, and I just thank them all the time. They're just they're just awesome, and we're having a great time here, and. You know, we pushed pretty hard today. We think we got six beds flipped and planted and we're just trying to get as much uh, planted and uh, direct seeded and transplanted out as we can right now. Try to push those fall greens. And hopefully you guys remember that, you know, in the fall, as the light diminishes and the heat units go down, you can plant things like a week apart, but they probably won't be ready a week apart. They might be ready two weeks apart or three weeks apart. So you can just get as much planted as you can and try to get as much growing before the frost and cool weather comes in. Still pretty warm here, um, you know, even in through the end of October, it's still pretty warm in North Carolina. So 
generally like we can get a pretty long season even outdoors uh, hopefully they don't have a freak frost but uh yeah we're really excited about all the stuff we got going on here the farm is in great shape and it's awesome i was kind of blown away by all the comments on the last video the uh that i did at the farm which was the uh you know my thoughts about no-till and i can't believe how sort of divisive it almost is like people have very strong feelings about what people classify things as and i don't want that to be the case here like myself and other people in the uh, the no-till community like it's not about being dogmatic it's about just those three things i mentioned is, is what's really important to me keep the soil covered keep it planted disturb it as little as possible and if you want to call it no-till minimal till whatever that's just the word right now that sort of encapsulates the third word encapsulates maybe not uh that that community and um you know the people that are involved in really regenerative agriculture in the market garden space and if you want to, that's what just people are calling it right now hopefully you got a chance to check out the video i did a couple days ago about my new channel i am super excited if you didn't watch that it's called content on content all about content creation i have a lot of really cool ideas about uh content for that channel so videos i want to make but if there's stuff specifically that you're interested in and you want me to cover please leave that in the comments down below send me a DM on Instagram or leave it in a comment over there too. And I really want to stress that uh, I really would love to see you guys over there and, and I would love your subscription, but only if you're interested in that content over there. That's really what's important here. I want to make sure it's an engaged community and audience. So, and, and as I said in that video I did on the channel a couple days ago, I'm still making farm content. I'm not sure what the posting schedule is going to be like. It might vary a little bit over the winter as there's less stuff going on, on the farm. I'm not sure yet, but I will be posting every week on this channel. So, you can expect that content if you're here and you're looking for that. So it's been super cool to go check out other people's farms and share their stories and promote their businesses and connect with all these farmers in the area. And there's such a strong community of farmers in central North Carolina here in the Piedmont. And man, they're, they're, everyone's doing such cool stuff. And I hope that you guys are checking out those videos, but also that I can reflect a little bit more about it in the next couple weeks and months and maybe make a video about some of my takeaways about all the things going on. But one of the biggest things is that all of their businesses are very diversified. They're all trying to make money in different ways and it's really cool and I love seeing all the creativity, especially with COVID right now and how they're uh, making things work and that's just absolutely fantastic. So hopefully uh, this wasn't too rambly for you. I just had a couple things I want to tell you about and that's what we got here today. So thanks so much for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Much better. Big fan of Yellow Dog the Cafe next to us, so. What's up? You don't? Yeah, it's awesome. I'm really happy with it. And, um. Sometimes it's really tricky for me to get a vlog done.